Okay. Is this working? Yes. Okay. So uh, I think we're going to start. We had some technical, uh, last minute technical arrangements to make, but I think we're all somewhat set. Um, so welcome all. Uh, my name is Sylvia Forney, and I'm Senior Curator of the Arts and Culture of Global Africa at the Royal Ontario Museum. And I'm very, very pleased and happy to be moderating this exciting first panel of the African Art in Venice Forum, uh, which really focuses on, as Neri was mentioning earlier, on the contemporary and future uh, relevance and potential of restitution with a specific focus on Benin. Um, I will very briefly introduce uh, our panelists, just so you know who's sitting where. Uh, but before that, I really would like to thank you all for being here, for choosing to be in this room amongst the many, many things that you could be doing in Venice right now. We really appreciate your presence and appreciate you. And of course, I want to thank the African Art in Venice Forum team for putting so much energy and enthusiasm in bringing us together at every uh, edition of the Venice Biennale and, and creating a space for dialogue and exchange. So sitting at this table um, from my right onwards in order, uh, we have Colleen Thompson, who is the arts and culture uh, officer, task officer of the president of the Republic of Benin, Yassine Lassisi, who is the artistic director of the National Gallery of Benin. Uh, so, uh, then we have Alicia Nock, who is researcher and curator at the Centre Pompidou in Paris. Um, who do we have? Georges Adéagbo, who is a very important uh, artist who I'm sure you all know. And Stéphane Kohler, who is the chairman of the Culture Forum Sud North. And uh, each one will do a brief presentation of their um, of the projects that they are carrying out in Benin and how they interconnect somehow. Uh, this is a mostly francophone panel. The presenters will speak in English, but probably if you forgive us, uh, there may be some answers in French to your questions. And so I pass the mic to Colleen. Bonjour. Good morning. It's a real pleasure to be here and to, to share this, this vibrancy around uh, creation, contemporary art, and as well, heritage. Um, our little delegation is here um, in order to share with you um, our experience and our testimony uh, regarding the process of the restitution and as well the production of the great exhibition um, now in Cotonou named Art of Benin of yesterday and today from the restitution to the revelation royal treasures and contemporary heart of Benin. Inaugurated on February 19th the exhibition Benin's Art of today and Yesterday, from restitution to revolution, royal treasures, and, and contemporary heart of Benin marks an historic turning point for restitutions and recognition of the contemporary Beninese heart scene. This diptych and public exhibition is a double event. It puts the spotlight on the classical heart of Benin, the so famous 26 royal treasures recently returned by the Musée du Quai Branly, and on the contemporary art scene of Benin and its diaspora major and emerging artists. Offering an immersion in the three centuries of Beninese art history, it constitutes a decisive turning point in Benin public cultural policy and the place that the African continent can occupy on the world map, both at the pole of creation and the pole of dissemination, 
integrated into the international hard work. Reveling Benin through its heritage and contemporary creation. As the President of the Republic of Benin reminds us in his preface to the catalogue of the exhibition, Art du Benin d'hier et d'aujourd'hui, de la restitution à la révélation, published by Herman Edition. It is at the end of the old rope that we weave the new, says the proverb. Without Susadide, artist creator of the, of the three anthroposomorphic sculptures of kings Gezo, Glele, and Beonzin, and the others of the past, there would be no Yves Pede, no Romuald Azoumé, no Moufouli Bello, no Julien Cizogan. This is why it seems necessary to seize the opportunity of the exhibition of 26 ancient royal treasures to present the new talents of the Beninese artistic and plastic scene. In spite of the absence of art school, in spite of the forced exile in the 19th century of those masterpieces of the past, which could have served as examples or sources of inspiration, but which are coming back to us in this 21st century, these artists have been able to take over, to seize the invisible, the invisible rope which was stretched out to them and to propose to us the plastic treasures of today and of tomorrow. Our generation has decided not to make a mistake. We have chosen to gather them around the old masters to reveal them to everyone. Beyond this height lightning, we are building them a framework, a home, a museum of contemporary art to welcome them even better and show them even more. We will put them in dialogue, in resonance with the other creators of their time. We will put them in circulation in the museums of the whole world. Venice, Dakar, Paris, Johannesburg, New York, Rabat, or Berlin. From yesterday to today, our artists and their works are the best ambassadors of our participation in the universal. Let us celebrate them. This highly symbolic event successfully inaugurates a program of cultural and museums constructions of international influence initiated by the government of Benin within and, out and outside its borders. It is part of the dynamic undertaken by Benin, both to restore its heritage and to promote its contemporary creation. To provide the country with four museums of international influence and multidisciplinary cultural institutions. The International Museum of Memory and Slavery in Ouida, the Museum of the Epic of the Amazons and the Kings of Dahomey in Abome, the International Museum of Vodun in Porto Novo, the Cotonou Museum of Contemporary Heart in the capital Cotonou, aimed at hosting permanent and temporary exhibitions of contemporary art from Benin, Africa, and the world. Artist residences, living spaces, dissemination, research, and creation. The multidisciplinary center for de the development of the arts in the city of knowledge and innovation in Seme City, based in Ouida, a place for transmission incubation, and transdisciplinary programs in the visual and performing arts. All of these cultural institutions are being prefigured and their inauguration, their launching, is scheduled for 22 for the Museum of Memory 
and slavery, and 24 for the others for the others museum and cultural institution. The aim is to provide Benin with museum and art institution as part of the cultural development of the country, but also to enrich to enrich the national collections and to ensure the protection of heritage by improving the legal and regulatory framework. The law on the protection of cultural heritage provides a legal and institutional framework to ensure an, a transversal and effective protection. The main axes ensure the reinforcement of protection tools, a modernization of the government system, an opening to sponsorship, the internalization of international standards and convention in the framework of the circulation of works, artworks, a better organization of the mobility and circulation of cultural goods. The Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Arts is the state structure that ensures the protection and safeguarding of cultural goods. And to quote Benedict Savoie, author of the Sar Savoie Report, restituting African heritage towards a new relational ethics, who could have imagined just four years ago that we would one day celebrate the return and exhibition in the current Republic of Benin of the most prestigious, spectacular, and well-known pieces of its artistic and dynastic heritage. Who would have thought that Benin, in a gentle way, would succeed in the diplomatic, cultural, and political tour de force that this restitution represents? The works that are returned have changed because times and people have changed. Is it, it is the return of the same different, and it is a new history that opens for the works themselves, but also for the societies that are attached to them. Taken from a king 130 years ago, they return to a republic at the cost of a republican effort, and they are all this at once and more. Objects of power, the soul of the departed, the testimony of a radical, formal, and aesthetic originality, economic and philosophical potentials, the proof that the world can change, subjects that are talked about and listened to the common good. Thank you. Merci. Good morning. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde. Um, I'm very happy to be here with all of you and to uh, uh, partager, uh, to, uh, to share uh, our uh, special, uh, very amazing experience we had in uh, Benin. Um, as my colleague mentioned, there cannot be any great successes, any great national achievements without political will. On the cultural and artistic level of our country, Benin, uh, the exhibition entitled A ah, of Benin of yesterday and today from restitution to revelation is the perfect example. This exhibition was born to showcase the 26 royal uh, treasures of Benin that were returned by France. The diptych, this diptych exhibition has a dual meaning. It revealed to the world, one of the hand, the cultural and historical heritage of Benin through the 36 royal treasures 
written by Vermizy, uh, Duque Branly, Jacques Chirac, and on the other hand, it presents the contemporary art scene uh, of Benin through 106 works of 34 uh, artists. In addition, this historical exhibition uh, aims to pay tribute to the royal uh, art of Dahomey, which is called the treasure of Beyonza. Back in Benin after 139 years of exile, it reminds us of one part of our culture and make it travel around the world. Despite the de uh, disappearance of a part of our, of our culture, contemporary artists have sensibly moved the new string at the end of the old one. By drawing inspiration from our cultural uh, rich past, they have been able to display the diversity and vitality of contemporary aesthetics. Bringing together the 26 royal treasures and the major and emerging artists of the contemporary scene in Benin and the diaspora is therefore one of the ambitions of the uh, exhibitions. The scenography of this diptych exhibition is based on an area of 203, uh, 2,300 uh, square feet with 1,800 square feet dedicated to the royal treasures and 1,050 to contemporary art represented by uh, 106 contemporary uh, work of uh, artists. In an immersive and experiential approach, the scenography is conceived as an archipelago with island representing the universe of uh, each artist. Let's quickly re review the 26 royal treasures. They are the 26 works taken by General Dodds during the sack of Abome. They include work works related to the physical attribute of power, doors and royal throne, like the, uh, the one of the, uh, the king, uh, Gezo. Uh, the spiritual attribute of power, totem. Here we have the totem of Glele and Beyonza. Uh, and finally, the third part brings together work related to memory. Um, the cult of death, like the Asa, you can see uh, an image. The communication system through the Rikats, the craft, um, the tunic of Agoje. These work, works dialogue with the contemporary uh, works to show how much, in spite of the absence of these royal treasures, the contemporary artist knew how to seize the invisible visible code to create. They propose us diverse and varied works approaching in a direct and indirect way to of the topic often related to their identity. Choose the 34 artists gathered in this part of the exhibition show how abundant the Beninese art scene is how much these artists express themselves through a diversity of mediums, technique, and aesthetics. Whether the artists are major or emerging, the vitality and intensity of their works take us on a journey through a universe combining past and present. This journey is manifest through the three, three chapters of the exhibitions. Again, as a reminder, the chapters are recurrence, variation, transition, transgression, hybridation. Let's see the first one. The art is present in the first, which is uh, recurrence, draw on the cultural and um, cultic history, the deities of the Vodou cosmogony, the intangible heritage, the cult of the deaf, as well as traditional materials like vegetables, vegetable rope, terracotta to express, uh, to express themselves. They choose to echo the royal heritage through several media. The second one, which is 
transitions. Verate these artists often go back and forth between the past and present by addressing themes related to the cult of ancestors, the tribute paid to women, and the celebration of royal heritage through a variety of media, painting, sculptures, multimedia techniques, installation, and so forth. The third one, which is uh, translation hybridization, this last part bring, brings together artists who ask existential uh, questions, the future of the human being, identity and current issues such as immigration. Our didactic exhibition also offers educational work, uh, workshop for children. This workshop aims to introduce the young generation to artistic creation. Having fun with coloring and the reproduction of works after a visit to the space, children are exposed to the culture in a playful way. By taking a multidisciplinary dimension in and off, the exhibition is set between the palace of the marina and in the whole country. Indeed, it is based on different places of creativity, such as open studio of visual artists and place uh, where exhibition concert meeting, screening, and artist performance are organized. The entire exhibition is managed by a commission composed of the National Agency for the uh, Promotion of Heritage and Tourism of Benin, NPT, for the heritage component, and the National Gallery, which is in charge of contemporary components. These two ent entities are under the supervision of the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Arts of Benin, all this being done under high patronage high patronage of the Presidency of the Republic of Benin. Speaking of number now, uh, the diagram below show in schematic form the evolution of attendance uh, of uh, the exhibition Benin of yesterday and today from restitution to revelation. As the figure mentioned uh, earlier, the exhibition is a great success. Uh, in between 28 uh, day, day, we have 78,352 uh, visitors, which is in, a lot for uh, in only 28 days. Um, alors, this success is already based on the public will and investment of the government to recover the royal uh, treasures. The echo of this, the restitution, is these treasures has largely exceeded our expectation and amazed many people. This has contributed to enthusiasm to uh, that extent beyond our borders. The symbolism and the recovered object and the place chosen to exhibit them attract even more people because until now, the presidency was not easily accessible. Today, the exhibition is breaking attendance record and has had several highlights between the brand visit, visit of, uh, of uh, the various events, it attracts everyone's attention. More than 30 high profile personalities from the cultural and artistic sector from all over the world have visited the exhibition. We proudly mention the French Minister of Culture, Rosine Bachelot, the President of the Cape uh, Mr. Emmanuel Casareiro, Mrs. Benedict Savoy, academic, author, and the report, Restituer le patrimoine africain, the President of the Foundation of the Museum of Morocco, Mehdi Kotbi, Chris Dercon, the President of the RMN, Grand Palais, and Ségolène Royal, William Citeco. I invite you to enjoy some of the great comments on, uh, on the seat of the, uh, the expo, uh, exhibition, which is expo at benin.bg. Thank you.
Good morning. So uh, I will start just with a little introduction of our association Kulturforum Süd Nord. Some of you might know about us. Kulturforum Süd Nord is active both in Cotonou, Hamburg, as well as different locations in Europe. Our main mission is to host processes in which cliches about so-called other cultures are identified and deconstructed through artistic and scholarly practice. Recently, we opened a new space in Cotonou with a library of art books and uh, art books and post-colonial theory, an artist residence, and an exhibition space. In Hamburg, we run an artist residence called Reversed Exploration, and we invite artists already for two years from the so-called Global South. Each artist explores the colonial past of the city in public space or museum collections, like the photo <laughs> collection of the Mare, which was formerly called the Museum of Ethnology. So far, Elian Aiso from Benin and Amina Zubir from Algeria were our guests. Next month, Lindeka Kampi, photographer from Cape Town, will come to Hamburg for two months. Each artist creates a poster that we print in 30,000 edition and insert it into daily newspapers next to supermarket ads, like, for example, this one by Amina Zubir on colonial photography. I brought some samples to show you and share with you. So now to this occasion. So thank you, Sylvia, for moderating this panel and Colleen Thompson, Yassim, Lassizi, Georges Adeagbo from Benin, Alicia Nock for joining, which we host on occasion of 26 Dahomean art treasures being very recently restituted to the Republic of Benin. In, it is the biggest case of restitution on the continent so far, and instead of going silently into storage, the government of Benin has decided to show the masterworks in an iconic place, the presidency of Benin, together with 34 contemporary artists' positions. Yassine and Colleen already told you about this wonderful project and tre tremendous success of the exhibition, Art of Yesterday's and Today's Benin from Restitution to Revelation. This is a unique precedent case from which others can observe and learn what needs to be done to reintegrate a cultural treasure into a society it was taken away from for more than 100 years. Already in 2014, that refers to the slides, Kultur from Südnord hosted in collaboration with Professor Romial Chibuzo, University of Cotonou, Abome Calavi, a symposium with the title The Stolen Compass. Would the contemporary art scene in Benin have taken a different trajectory if the artifacts of their ancestors would have been permitted to stay home. Eight papers were presented at that time and discussed by young artists and art historians. Next, please. So we see the discussion here. And next. Now, last February, as an off event to the exhibition in the presidency that Colleen and Yassine talked about, we opened our new space with an exhibition called what will they tell us, which is a consequential sequence of the stolen compass. Now they're back. What will they tell us? With works by Sanda Amadou, Christelle Yaoui, and Josh Adeagbo. Next. So, um, it they, uh, next one. A debate on the sustainability of the effects of the returned artworks took place and was recorded, soon to, soon to be transcribed and published. Yet we see the return of the 26 masterpieces as an inspiration to experiment with innovative ways to preserve and present national heritage and contemporary voices. In a creative and inten inventive country like Benin, there is no need to repeat museum practice from Europe. To facilitate and open up this debate, we had the idea to host a brainstorming platform, or platforms in plural, even though only temporarily for a couple of weeks to experiment freely 
and go beyond the white cube paradigm in Benin and Germany. With the team of La Galerie Nationale, the National Gallery of Benin, as partners, and um, Dresden University Department of Picture Research in a Global Context, Kunsthaus Hamburg, we plan workshops in Benin and Germany called Museum Why Why to create a community based virtual models of bringing art and people together. Tutors and specialists from Benin and Germany, among them Benedict Sanvoy, confirmed. There are several of our tutors in the audience. For example, there is Simon, Simon Fujiwara and Inga, Inga Draxet. George Adiaku are here. We will keep you posted about this project. And of course, Alicia Nock, she's also part of the team. We will keep you posted via social media and the participants' websites. So, and now, yeah, this is some pictures from the space. Now I would like to shortly introduce George's work, which you, of, some of you might have seen. So, George's archival practice, artistic archaeology, questions how knowledge is produced, organized, passed on, and preserved. With his rhizomatic networks of elements from West Africa and the respective exhibition site, he questions the ubiquity of Western logic principles, such as syllogisms, for example. Without losing time and energy in polemics, he continuously demonstrates and counteracts Western rationalism and fosters alternative modes of visual inquiry, visual philosophy. In addition, in his writing, what is integral, that is integral part of his assemblages, he deconstructs French syntax to appropriate the language of the colonizer and make it his own. He was twice at the Venice Biennale and won in 1999 as first artist from the continent and honorary mention of the jury. He also shows his work at the Presidency in Art du Benin about that we just the exhibition that we just talked about. So, George, tu veux lire, lire ton message ou oh, je, eh, je vais essayer de traduire oh, que tu disais tu vas commencer avec ça de la même manière. Bonjour à tout le monde. L'art étant une manière que nous prenons pour dire la vérité, pour faire voir la vérité à son prochain, le frère, à sa collègue, la soeur, et rester son ami, sans devenir son ennemi. Art is a way to tell, to talk and dialogue with your next, your fellow human beings, uh, to, a way to talk with them without becoming, creating antagonisms and without becoming their enemies. Ce que je fais est une de l'art. What I do, what I do is that art, L'art du Bénin d'hier et d'aujourd'hui, de la restitution à la révélation. Art of Benin from yesterday and today, from the restitution to revelation. Né à le faire et le faisant, on ne pourra pas dire que je sais le faire. Born to do it, to do what I do, but not being the one who should say that I can do it or I'm doing it well. Ayant à le faire et le faisant, C'est à une personne à venir voir ce que je fais. Having to do it and not being, have being forced to do it and having wanting to do it, 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 there will be a person that will say, et dire que je sais le faire et peut continuer à le faire. So it's up to another person, not to myself, to say that I can do it and I should continue doing it. Merci et encore merci à au feu, au cul, au raison. Thank you, and again, thank you, and thank you to Okui and Vesor. Au feu, Harald Zeman. To the, to the late Harald Zeman. Et à Stéphane, qui sont venus faire voir le Bénin et faire connaître le Bénin dans sa culture à la Bénin du Bénin. Thank you to, to me. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to translate that. <laughs> so, <laughs> of bringing or a bringing messages from Benin or Benin, Benin creators to the Bayer in Venice. So you saw the images of the first collaboration, the first work of George 
on the Campo Arsenale in 1999, which brought him an honorary mention uh, of the jury. So Alicia, uh, you're probably the only person on this table who has not had a specific active role in this event, but you've been a close observer and participant to it. So what is your perspective on what's been happening in Benin and why is it important? Yeah, uh, thanks very much for having me. I'm very honored to be a, a special witness and guest for, for this panel. And uh, I must say I'm a very strong supporter of what's happening in Benin, but most, most, mostly because what is happening to me is setting up, uh, is really setting up a new conversation uh, also around uh, the continent itself and also not around the continent itself, but about also how globally the conversation, that's why we're speaking in Venice as well, has to shift uh, towards um, the continent itself, the Pan-African Pan -African conversation as being the center of the conversation and actually not Venice or not the global north, but really how uh, this effort in Benin is also speaking to so many efforts that have been happening on the continent artist-run uh, spaces, artists being historians and collectors, and that's also why I feel this panel is so significant as well, because the role that George and Stefan have been playing, but also other artists on the continent, other exhibition and institution makers, uh, are in a, about how to think about cultural policy, bringing together uh, political governance, and that's extraordinary. Uh, and that's why this panel is also, uh, I think, historical in that sense, because as Colleen said, I mean, I think, you know, since Senghor, and that's already 60 years ago, we haven't seen a president on the continent, you know, kind of um, starting such a, a big cultural policy for, for the country and for, and for the continent. Uh, but how these big institutions and public institutions in the making will be conversing with artists uh, and that have been also starting institutions and uh, and that's that's a new way of engaging with art history with institution making and that's also why I mean my my presence I think is um, is you know is, is here is because my my own concern being uh, representing this big museum in Paris and this uh, this uh, international museum is is not so much to be there as um, as a um, um, represent uh, to represent that museum than to show that for me within my Western perspective the con the concept and the idea is really to kind of bridge a new way of dealing with institutions a no new way of dealing with art history that is connecting different players in and and different scales of people. Uh, in, in, in a different way. Um, and what was for me extremely striking, seeing that show beyond the objects that are of course extraordinary, of course, to experience and to see how people connect with that history as a grounding uh, is really to understand how the history has always been in the making and that somehow the, it's not about old and new, it's about also how artists even have been conversing and speaking to these objects that have been long gone in many in many different ways, just like Georges and uh, other artists also in the exhibition that have been showing these objects or having them reappear in some in some ways. And and artists have been collectors. Artists ar artists have been history makers. And uh, and of course, your work in that in that extent ex is extremely important. You are an artist as. Uh, you're a collector, you're a history maker, you're a translator. And for me, seeing these objects and these practices connected through this, uh, this event was just a way to show that the conversation needs to be set in a different way. And the question is not so much about the objects themselves than about who is speaking, what history are we speaking of, and who is able to speak in which language. And I remember you, Georges, uh, telling me how important it was that for the first time you were installing your work in the Ballet de la Marina in your own language. And you being the extraordinary translator that we know, mediating different contexts together, I think that's an extremely powerful statement in itself. So I guess, um, 
for me, that was the most um, the most extraordinary side of that event was really to understand that the conversation is shifting, and and that we need to think now from Benin, from the continent, and that is a bigger conversation even within the country, but within different countries and the global south being the center of the conversation. And I guess you know, um, Sylvia yourself, you have been also addressing all these. Um, addressing all these issues, and I think that would be also kind of really interesting to have your own statement around your own work in how to deal with this uh, this conversation and these objects as well. Yeah, uh, maybe let's keep a minute more the focus on Benin because I think there are really important issues that emerge from this experience, which is really a pioneeristic experience. Uh, yesterday we were talking amongst ourselves in preparation for this panel, and one thing that Colleen and Yassine were emphasizing is that in Benin there's no conversation about restitution. Restitution has happened, so there is a process of re-engagement or engagement with these historical objects. And so it's really, Whereas for other nations in the continent, this is still a conversation, or maybe from a European perspective, there's still a debate. When you come to the ground and what's happening in Benin, it's a reality, it's no longer a debate. And this is a really inspiring model to look at. And one question that I had for Colleen, Yassim, Stefan, all of you really, is, beyond the focus that you showed us about artists engaging with these historical objects. I would like you to elaborate a little bit more on the public and what has been the public response to this exhibition and to the initiatives that have been taking place in Benin. Because ultimately, whereas the intellectual, academic, artistic conversation, it's extremely interesting for these things to be relevant and to matter. It is, you know, if the public connects to this and how they connect that really can change society in the more utopian but also ideal way. Uh, no, no. Okay. Yes. Non, mais tu pourras répondre aussi. Mais, alors, euh, let uh, only one word uh, most softly comes when you read, you know, the uh, uh, testimonies is the pride, the pride to be Beninese, to pride, the pride to, uh, to uh, discover, to came, to discover, to see this object uh, who are, you know, who came from, uh, uh, France uh, after 139 uh, years after, you see. It's most, um, and they are very exciting, you know. They came once, twice, they came in family, they came, um, they are very happy to discover this uh, object. Her word is very surprised. La fierté, c'est ça. Yeah, the, the, um, the key word could be yeah, the pride um, as well, the, um, the emotion, um, and um, a, a real, um, a real. Um, taste for heart, heritage, um, like un, un gros appétit, un, un appétit, uh, voilà, um, de, de visiter, revisiter, to come once, to come twice, to come with family, to come with friends, to come with the children. It's like, um, um, you know, um, a reunion, a family reunion, and, um, and uh, this this exhibition is 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 a great surprise. There is the 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 the, the, the part on on the on the on the objects, the, the so famous twenty six, 
and as well it's like a, a an itinerary a journey a journey into into uh, 300 uh, centuries of uh, of uh, uh, heart history of uh, of Benin and uh, this this journey begin with the discovering of the 26 and then you discover the revelation so the title is a, a great um, a great synopsis of uh, the, um, the 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 experience the experience of the of the exhibition from the restitution to the revelation and from the, the past to the contemporary and um, the, the the it's it's a great a surprise for us every day to, to discover the surprise, the, the, um, the emotion, the pride, and the, the curiosity uh, showed uh, by, uh, by our visitors, visitors coming from the whole country, from up north to south, to east, to west, but as well our neighbors from Togo and uh, Nigeria, and uh, as well the, the tourists and the academics and, and the journalists, and it's, uh, it's uh, a, a big emotion for us as well. And... Uh, Hello. And um, concerning the public, I would say also while George Adiakpo was installing his work in the marina, it was several days, I would count also the people that help the technicians. I would also see them as public because the discussion of George with the installers was amazing. And I was very moved to see, I mean, I've been installing many installation works in with museums in uh, all over the world with George, and it's always in English, it's in French, and it's in Chinese or many other languages. And it was the first time that he was in dialogue in his mother language in phone with the team installing and discussing the meaning of the objects because he was showing a huge Egun costume, a costume which is used in uh, rituals to call the ancestor spirits to give uh, advice to the family that are sacred costumes. So there was a constant discussion of how and why exhibit these sacred costumes in a contemporary art exhibition. So that was very moving to see this dialogue. And then during the exhibition opening, many families and people sat down and looked and talked with George. Je veux dire quelque chose sur le processus. Je disais, c'est un des premières fois que tu as installé un œuvre dans la langue faune. Parce que normalement, je traduis l'installation anglais, français. Euh, français, j'ai pas besoin de traduire, mais <rire> japonais. Mais là, j'étais très ému parce que tu, tu as parlé avec les installateurs sur pourquoi exposer un costume de goût. C'était comme quoi, comment pour toi euh, installer chez toi Moi, je, 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 me suis, je me suis permis à installer ce, tel costume, c'est-à-dire pour résister à quelque sorte d'histoire. Parce que c'était. C'était une histoire qui s'était passée et on n'était pas témoin. N'étant pas témoin, on n'a pas cru à l'histoire. So let me just translate. So I, I, I took this costume that is used to, to call the spirit of a grandfather, grandmother, to talk to the family as a symbol, to revive or uh, make the history reborn as a, in this context of the exhibition. Donc, uh, c'est-à-dire ces, ces objets qui sont restitués par la France au Bénin, c'est-à-dire que, que, sa, que savons-nous de, de, de ces objets So these objects coming back from France, what, what do we really know about these objects Donc, ne sachant rien de ces, de ces objets, c'est-à-dire pour faire rappel à ce que, à ce que fut ces, ces objets, et c'est pour ça que tout à l'heure je disais, mais à le faire, et le faisant, pour ne pas dire que je sais le faire, mais en ayant à le faire, et le faisant, c'est à une personne à venir voir ce que je fais, et dire que je sais le faire, et pour continuer à le faire. So, and as I said before, it's not you yourself cannot frame what, what you're performing, what you're doing, it's to someone else to recognize what you're doing and encourage. 
what we're doing. So, Alicia. Yeah, I think what George is saying is a very important thing that's also, that was also embedded in, in the exhibition, the event and the future cultural policy program that will happen in, in Benin is about this performativity of history that, um, that the artists have constantly addressed in, uh, in, in Benin and, um, and that was what the show was, was actually showing was that the objects never come back as objects. They have, they are moving histories. They're about mobility, about circulation. And, and this translation that you're, you're always uh, doing, Georges, with this idea of Egun, uh, the masquerade coming from Nigeria, that is also has been translated into Benin and into other contexts as a response to also the migration and the return of these objects that are migrating again and the idea that beyond uh, the fact that we, we see these objects again, yeah, we have to learn about them, we have to appropriate them in a new way, and we have to perform those layers of history with them. And I think in the exhibition that was, for me, a revelation was, the revelation was to reveal those artists that had had this uh, performative uh, relationship to history and had, had also uh, somehow uh, excavated already that history and had, had been in dialogue with that history. So suddenly it's just everything falling into pieces. But uh, this, uh, these layers were there. And I think the exhibition is also the starting point for a bigger conversation. And we were speaking yesterday with Colleen about what the National Gallery will be and how to deal with this performativity and about uh, how to engage with those layers of history and not only with the material history, and that's where we look back to, to the conversation, your own work uh, dealing with a history that is embedded in objects, but also the objects are just the triggers for, uh, for another kind of uh, relationship that the artists have been dealing with for so long. Yeah, and I think really at a global level, um, thinking also beyond physical restitution of objects, I, I work in a large colonial museum that has over 10,000 African objects. And while some will be subjected to physical repatriation, there will still be a lot of things that will not go home. And maybe we don't even know exactly what that home is. And I owe to poet and artist Nurbese Philip, with whom I've been working in the last few years, in thinking about how these diasporic objects can be an anchor for diasporic Africans who live elsewhere. So even if they're not returned to the continent, they could be returned in some way, which we still need to figure out because you know there are always some legal rules or things that make things complicated, but also to think of collections that are that have been seized violently, just like people have been seized violently, and what kind of kinship and relationships can be established with artists, but also with the public in these contexts, so that these quote-unquote ethnographic objects really shift and change meaning, and they're no longer informed or confined by the Western gaze and the way they were collected because they have other types of potential. So I think really what is happening on the continent and what could happen elsewhere shifts the conversation in very significant ways. And it's a really exciting moment to see unfolding that may also really shift the balance of where the conversation is centered in very inspiring ways. Um, so we've been speaking so for less for an hour. Does anybody? I know we have 15 minutes. Uh, if anybody from the audience has any question for any of the panelists, yeah, yeah. good good morning. Um, thank you so much for all your presentations, for your work, um, for the exhibition. I really hope to see it. Um, I just wanted to ask about my name is Cheryl Finley. I'm a professor of art history at Spelman College. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work with technology, uh, with blockchain, and also thinking about ways that technology can also be part of the conversation, um, the conversation that, that, that we're having uh, in terms of 
ameliorating um, these wrongs for so many years. And I wanted to know if anyone has any comments on how using technology might be something that, and this is you know, emerging technology, it's really technology that's with us to stay, uh, thinking about things like Web 3.0, how might conversations in that space uh, be able to help um, with, with, you know, uh, work around restitution, whether it's physical or not, um, and uh, maybe to bring ideas around restitution that talk about certain forms of shared uh, understanding in language. Thank you very much. Just to add to something that, you know, in, in the future that you might look at too, there's a, a group that I work with um, in, in New York called Art and Antiquity Blockchain Consortium, uh, which is doing some of this type of work and trying to sort of lead the way in thinking about um, how to uh, work work in, in uh, formats around cultural heritage and restitution. So I uh, just wanted to kind of signal that just to see if that might come in future conversations. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you. We have um, good news for you. <laughs> we came with uh, the virtual exhibition of uh, Benin's art of today and tomorrow. So you will be able uh, to have this immersive experience in Cotonou, but from Venice. Yeah, it's here, uh, so uh, you will wear your yeah. your special yeah 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 yeah, and uh, and you will travel uh, by by the same time in in Cotonou, and you will uh, you will be able to take to touch the egungun of uh, Mr. George Adeagbo. Which is which is not. Hello. Absolutely not allowed yeah. to touch, <laughs> <laughs> but touch with, with the eyes and with the heart. Oui, c'est ici. So that that's our yeah yeah. So <laughs> so you will be able to 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 experience the our virtual exhibition with the 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 technology or virtuality. But also in terms of, I mean, not technological point of view, but in terms of restitution, George uh, was on a panel of the Deichtohallen in Hamburg on occasion of William Kentridge exhibition. And he said, jokingly, I mean, it's about who controls the narration. And is it more important where the objects are or who controls the narration? Because George Adiabu, he said, well, I'm exporting in my installations every year dozens of African sculptures that and that sometimes are bought by museums like Centre Pompidou or Moderna Museum Stockholm. Then maybe one day the president, a president of Benin, will tell Moderna Museum they want the sculpture back that I brought out in my installation. And then we kind of concluded that it is maybe not so important where the objects are. I mean, of course it is important, but also in terms of what Sylvia said, it's who controls the narration. So even if some of the objects cannot be returned from your museum, it is fantastic to, to reconsider who controls the narrations about them. Yeah, and George has been disseminating this question all around the world in which, in each context he operates, and he's always responding to context daily you know on a daily basis he's adding elements so the these installations are never finished and so all these museums and Pompidou is, is one of them and i thank you for that is also asking within the museum george is asking people asking the museum asking the viewers who is speaking to who in which language and can we how do we respond and how do we position ourselves in that conversation? So we need to have that question disseminated as much as possible. Um, and each question is different according to the different context that you address, right?
And of course, in the exhibition, some of the artists have been using technology, um, and yeah, mm -hmm. so technology is one of the tools that the artists yeah, use yeah, as well. Yeah, sound, yeah, so, yeah. sound also as technology in itself, um, beyond. Uh, Mixed majors, multimedias, fabrics, and sure, a focus of uh, of the on the, the the new generation, and uh, and uh, as well uh, a perspective, a gender perspective as well. So this this ex exhibition has um, a contemporary statement, an approach, and proposal. We're going to show this three-minute video just as a conclusion, so you also see the way the project is officially presented. And we have another good news for you. You will be able to come to Cotonou for the reopening of the ex exhibition from July 15th until August 31st. So the, the exhibition, the first seconds, will end at the end of May, but we will reopen in order to welcome uh, our visitors from Venice. <laughs> <laughs> and as well, uh, we bought um, uh, the catalogs of the diptych, the diptych catalogs of the diptych uh, exhibition. So you are able uh, to to buy them, and um, and uh, and the twenty five euros for the the tre royal treasures and and thirty for the contemporary hard volume. And uh, soon you will be able to to uh, to to buy to comment um, the bilingual version. So first, the francophone version is just there if you if you want uh, 
the the primary uh, uh, collection of uh, of this uh, catalog of those catalogs so it could be a a, a wonderful uh, testimony of this wonderful historical exhibition Okay, so we're at the end of our time, so thank you all for being with us again, and uh, we hope you make a trip to Benin. You must well, Thank you, really. <laughs>